action! <laughs> Live from Chris and Tara's living room in beautiful downtown Queens, New York, <laughs> it's the very first installment of Shakespeare's Happy Hour, Cocktails and Mocktails with the Bard. Your go-to source for sparkling Shakespeare-centered cocktail conversation, trivia, drinks, games, guests, and to help get the party started, a joke. Why did Shakespeare write in ink? Because pencils confused him. To be or not to be? <laughs> What exactly are bitters? <laughs> you just got a delightfully dumb joke from actor, director, playwright, teacher, and co-associate artistic director, the one, the only, Melissa Maxwell. Melissa gave a tour de force performance as Prospero in GRSF's production of The Tempest last summer. So we thought we'd stick in the world of that play as we serve up some drinks created by our first guest mixologist. Victoria Nassif is an amazing actor and currently touring with the play Cartography. Great River audiences will remember her as a witch in Macbeth, the sassy Brigalia in Servant of Two Masters, and as Prospero's feisty and free-spirited daughter, the admired Miranda. She has created a specialty drink for Shakespeare's Happy Hour based on a piece of text from The Tempest. Please welcome Victoria Nassif. Oh. Hey, Victoria! Hello, friends! I have named this cocktail Rough Magic from a line that Prospero, my dad, says, played by the incomparable Melissa Maxwell. What you need for this cocktail is vodka, ginger beer, lime, mint. We are going to add pomegranate molasses. You can Google how to make this yourself if you like, or any Middle Eastern market will have it. I always have it in my kitchen because it is great to cook with. Muddle four mint leaves, add the juice from half a lime, two ounces of vodka. If you want to make this a mocktail, dub the vodka for some club soda, one tablespoon pomegranate molasses. Look at that deep, nice, dark color. This is our rough magic. So we are taking the double, double, double. You're gonna pour it over some ice, top it off with your ginger beer. I'm going to garnish mine with a purple shiso leaf and some purple basil flowers. All right, let's see how we did. Cheers. It's very yummy. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> okay, so I have my Rough Magic mocktail. And I have the cocktail. The recipe for Victoria's cocktail can be found in the description below, along with a recipe on how to make the uh, beautiful pomegranate molasses, which makes this drink so It was super easy. Delicious. The name of this week's libation comes from one of Prospero's speeches near the end of the play. I have bedimmed the nude tide sun and called forth the mutinous winds and took the green sea and the azured vaults set roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder I have given fire and rifted Joe's stout oak with his own bolt. The strong based promontory I have made shake and by the spurs plucked up the pine and the cedar. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers oped and led them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic, I hear abjure. Rough, during the Elizabethan times, or for the Jacobean audience that would watch this play, meant more than just harsh or ungentle. It had a more nuanced and interesting meaning to them. To them, it did mean that, but it also meant violent and perhaps even malevolent in nature. Hmm. Having the play's lead character employ this brand of rough magic would have been seen as sinful or dangerous. The fact that Prospero ends the speech by relinquishing the use of rough magic means that he's back on the right side of things, and harmony has been restored. Now, I like to think that if you finish your own glass of rough magic, then you have abjured it in your own way <laughs> and restored order to the universe. Cheers. Cheers. Now, since... Victoria played Prospero's daughter, Miranda. I think that her use of pomegranate molasses is especially apt. Pomegranates have been considered sacred fruit in multiple cultures and religions for thousands of years. They are symbols of love, beauty, blessings, and the promise of children. To unpack the magic part of the rough magic, let's talk a little bit about the color, because of course what we have here closely resembles the ancient dye made by the Phoenicians called Tyrian purple. Ooh. 
As early as the 15th century BC, the people of ancient Phoenicia were producing this purple dye from several species of sea snails, known as murex. They actually did a modern experiment. It took 10,000 of these little sea snails to produce one gram of Tyrian purple. The experiment they did in, in the year 2000 only produced enough dye to make one handkerchief. Yeah. As a result, the only people that could actually afford this were the ruling elite in Egypt and in Rome and many other places in, in the ancient world. They considered their leaders to be gods. Mm. And so we began to associate purple with magic. Benjamin Buchwald is an actor, writer, photographer, filmmaker, teacher, and martial artist. GRSF audiences will recognize him from his nine seasons with the acting company, where he has played the romantic heroes Romeo and Orlando and the morally dubious Giacomo and Cassius. But this season, he was cast in a completely different kind of role, Ariel in The Tempest. Direct from GRSF's downtown offices in Winona, Minnesota, please welcome Benjamin Buchwald. Yeah, hey, Benjamin. Benjamin. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining me. Hey, Benjamin, I see that you're enjoying a glass of the rough magic. Are you having the mocktail or the cocktail? I am actually enjoying the mocktail version because uh, I'm here at the office. I drove and I don't, I, I don't mess with that. As we mentioned, you, you played Ariel this summer which is a part being a supernatural creature, the sort of spirit of the air. It's, there's a lot of different interpretations. How did you and Beth figure out how you were going to play the part? Well, Beth had actually a lot of ideas very early on, before COVID even. She really wanted Ariel to be as athletic as possible. Actually, my, be my best compliment that I've ever received, they came up to me and they're, oh, Benjamin, I saw, I saw your shows this weekend. Oh, really? Great. So did you like... Uh, you know, the relationship between me and Prospero, you know, the tension. It's like, yeah, that was all right. It's actually when you when you launched yourself over that wall, and I'm like, oh, really? And then he goes, I mean, you were like a panther. Yeah, like, like a man panther. And I was all, a man panther? I'll take it. Benjamin Buchwald, we are delighted that you are here with us today to be the very first contestant for our Shakespeare quiz. Get two out of three questions right, and you will win this coaster for one of our donors. And today, you will be playing for Leslie Albers of Winona, Minnesota. <gasps> Leslie, yes! Yay, Leslie! You ready to play? Ready for that slam dunk, Leslie? Here we go. All right, here we go. Question number one. Ariel has been imprisoned by Caliban's mother, Sycorax, in a cloven pine tree for how many years before being freed by Prospero? Oh, yeah, cloven oak. How many years? I know this. I want to say it was 12 years. Hey, 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 one down. All right, Leslie, one for one. All right, second question. As a spirit of the air, the name Ariel, spelled A-R-I-E-L, may simply be a play on the word spelled A-E-R-I-A-L. However, Shakespeare's spelling of the name with its Hebraic E-L ending actually translates to what? <sighs> translates what? to another word, which is a thing, and that thing is... African sparrow carrying a coconut. <laughs> oh, I love that reference. I love that reference, but no. No, no that is, of course, that is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not the right answer. The correct answer is lion of God. <laughs> okay, here we go. Listen to this. The Geneva Bible, which Shakespeare would have known, contains an interesting footnote describing Ariel as the Lion of God, placing Ariel in line with benevolent spirits, which would have been important to a pious Renaissance audience, mm. and describes this Ariel as having the power to confuse and weaken his enemy, and listen to this, he would do it with sounds and tempests. <laughs> wow. It's like he knew what he was doing. <laughs> okay, okay, don't worry, Benjamin. Don't worry, you're still in it. Leslie, he has not let you down yet. Here we go, here we There's go. There's still hope. Question number three, Benjamin. Yes. No, that's not me. Yeah. 
You played Ariel in a semi-transparent unitard with extensive eye makeup and hand-tinted natural hair. I played Ariel in a semi-transparent unitard with extensive eye makeup and a wig. Which was the correct interpretation of the character? <laughs> Funny you should ask this because I thought about this a lot. I hate to be the one to say it now, but um, the, the most recent interpretation was the more accurate interpretation of the character. It was a trick question. We would have accepted any answer. Benjamin, you have won a coaster for Leslie Albers of Winona, Minnesota. Benjamin Buchholz, congratulations. Congratulations, Leslie Benjamin. Leslie is a winner. Yes. Leslie, I didn't let you down. I didn't let you down. Congratulations, Benjamin. Benjamin is an actor, a teacher, a filmmaker, a, a martial artist, a writer, a photographer. And, and now a Shakespeare Trivia Contest winner. Okay, Chris, so to wind down the evening, let's just daydream a little bit. What are you looking forward to in the world of Shakespeare? Okay, okay. So what I'm looking forward to, Joel Cohn of the Cohn Brothers fame, the-, the Fargo. The Fargo and, and, and Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And so many films. I, they've made some of the best films in the last 20 years, right? Joel and Ian Cohn. But Joel Cohn on his own is uh, coming out with a production of Macbeth, a, a black and white film production of Macbeth. I mean, it, it's packed with amazing people. Francis McDormand's in it and Denzel Washington. I mean, brilliant. But the reason that I'm really excited about this movie is the person playing the porter. The person playing the porter is Stephen Root, who I think is one of the greatest character actors that's alive today. I think he's amazing. And I, I'm kind of dying to see what Stephen Root will do with the porter. He's gonna be perfect. He's gonna be great, I assume, but it's such a tricky part. I wanna know what he does with it. That's what I'm looking forward to. Weirdly, all of that, Coen Brothers, Francis McDormand, Denzel, I wanna see what Stephen Root yeah. figures out. Thank you all so much for joining us for our very first Shakespeare's Happy Hour Cocktails and Delicious Mocktails with the Bard. Cheers, everybody. Mm -hmm.